this is very historical information in regards to a possible nuclear holocaust. Please watch it as this guy discovers old data towards being inaccurate because of how it was documented back years ago and how that new data has enlightened advancements in one of the dangerous man-made devices ever created in the universe. Please watch. Now, thanks to a project headed by Greg Spriggs at Lawrence Livermore National... This is a really big fireball. It'll be about two miles across. Now, thanks to a project headed by Greg Spriggs at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory in California, the public can see them as never before. It's unclassified. It's not a threat to national security. Starting in 1945, the U.S. conducted 210 nuclear tests above ground. All of them recorded on film from as many angles as possible. I now declare that the United States does not propose to conduct nuclear tests in the atmosphere so long as other states do not do so. That ended in 1963 when, for the good of the planet, the U.S. and the Soviet Union agreed to stop testing in the atmosphere. So let's play this in fast motion, and you can see that mock stem crawling up. Unlike most of us, Spriggs understands the physics that produces these spectacular images. Temperatures can reach anywhere from about 10 million degrees up to about 15 million degrees initially. Degrees Kelvin, very hot, very hot. At the outer edge of the fireball is a shock wave. But the fireball doesn't vaporize, the shock wave crushes. See those tiny objects in the foreground? Those are tanks about to be hit by the shock wave. When it first starts off, it's moving at Mach 100, 100 times the speed of sound. And then there is the mushroom-shaped cloud which climbs into the sky, spewing radiation. That's directly tied to the nuclear fallout, which was very, very sensitive to the cloud height. Using a computer to measure the cloud from one blast, Spriggs discovered the original calculations made 50 years ago were off by a full mile. Instead of 35,000 feet, it was something like 40,000 feet, and it was because of the way they measured it. That made him wonder if calculations from all the other blasts were wrong as well. It was more than just academic curiosity. Those calculations are used to predict the performance, what Spriggs calls the yield, of today's weapons. If you measure the shockwave radius and you're off by 1%, you will be off by 5% in the yield. So Spriggs set out to reanalyze and then release to the public the estimated 9,000 rolls of film that had been shot. He found most of them in the archives at Los Alamos National Laboratory in New Mexico, birthplace of the atom bomb, untouched for decades, a vast scientific treasure trove left to decay. I've had a challenge with some cans just getting the can open. Jim Moy is one of this country's foremost film preservationists. Once entrusted with the Zapruder film of President Kennedy's assassination, he now has the job of retrieving the only visual record of America's most fearsome weapons. I want to first, once I open a can, determine the condition of the film. And one way is by smell, because any acetate-based film, as the base that carries the image starts to decay, it will put off an odor, which is called vinegar syndrome. It smells like vinegar. It does, exactly. It sounds like basically it's a race against time. It really is. Because until those cans are opened, you don't know the condition. Some of the film has been lost forever. But Moy was able to restore most of it, using a scanner to convert each frame to a digital file. Here, we're able to analyze all the fireball films in an automated way. Digital technology allowed Spriggs to analyze the films with much greater precision. Those are high-energy x-rays running down the cable and vaporizing the cable. And he found that the measurements made decades ago over the Pacific Ocean and Nevada Desert were inaccurate. The best they could do in the 50s was on the order of about plus or minus 7, maybe 10 percent. So we're talking maybe plus or minus 100 kilotons for a one megaton shot. A kiloton is an explosion equivalent to 1,000 tons of TNT. 100 kilotons is about six times bigger than the bomb which leveled Hiroshima, killing a third of the population. 
The Pentagon would not tell us if the new data from the old tests had forced any change in current nuclear targeting plans. But that does not change the impact of simply looking at images like this. Frozen for one millionth of a second from two miles away, this fireball truly looks like an alien come to devour the Earth. What do you hope the public gets out of watching I hope these? they appreciate just how horrific these weapons are. This is something that can kill millions of people in the blink of an eye. Spriggs is one of the few nuclear weapons designers old enough to have actually witnessed a nuclear explosion. The 1962 weapon effects testing, Operation Fishbowl. A high altitude nighttime blast over the Pacific. The sky lit up like it was noon. No matter what direction you were looking, it just lit up. And it took about 15 minutes for all the colors to fade away. How does the real thing then compare with the film? It's amazing the difference between what occurred out there and what's on the film. As majestic and uh, fearsome as those photos appear, they don't come close. Not even close to what you see in real life. Unicell knows when you don't get enough sleep, it's hard. So this is where the Gouda and uh, Parmesan... Are you excited? I'm... Whether it's cow. Well, it looks like that's the end of that program. You don't like it? I didn't know how long that program was. But it's uh, very interesting and how that old film was off in its trajectories and now this guy can take this information and tweak it into a digital form that will make even the uh, original assessment of being off <coughs> like he has been able to accomplish I find that uh, I find that a bit fascinating that, that uh, this is a really big fireball I'll be about two miles across now thanks to a project headed by Greg Spriggs at Lawrence Livermore now I find that a bit fascinating that they hadn't done already done this if you'll hear here on the front he'll tell you where you can find his work at. Listen. National Laboratory in California. The public can see them as never before. Let's so back it up. Right there. At Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory in California. The public can see them as never before. That's unclassified. Let's back it up one more time. This is a really big fireball. I'll be about two miles across. Now, thanks to a project headed by Greg Spriggs at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory in California. The public can see them as never before. It's unclassified. It's not a threat to national security. Starting in night. Lawrence Laboratory, Laboratory in California. Now let's look at these in slow motion by using this digital TV towards what did we can see here that will even go beyond even what he has done in slow motion. I'm moving my dial real slow so you can see this reaction and how the force it's just tremendous whenever something like this goes off. It almost looks like it's it's a a natural occurrence, like a cloud. Who would think? It's possible. I now declare that the United States 
does not propose to conduct nuclear tests in the atmosphere so long as other states do not do so. That ended in 1963 when, for the good of the planet, the U.S. and the Soviet Union agreed to stop testing in the atmosphere. So let's play this in fast motion. All right. This will be some cool data. See how that's pluming up. understands the physics that produces these spectacular images. Million degrees up to about 15 million degrees initially. Degrees Kelvin. Very hot. Very hot. At the outer... Usually 6,000 degrees will melt just about any object. He's talking about something to be twice that hot. Not quite as hot as a strike of lightning. They claim lightning is about 60,000 degrees. Still, 15,000 degrees. That's hot. Watch this. This is in slow, slow motion. In other words, I'm going slower than what he was going. Those are tanks. That's fixing to be hit by the impact. And that's the repercussion of the tanks. And we're talking about A quarter to three quarters of an inch of artillery metal that is something else to uh, penetrate through. Watch how this this house just disintegrates. That's the heat. The heat comes first. And then here comes the initial blast. Boom. That is powerful. That is powerful. You aren't going to get much anything any more powerful than that. Watch the mushroom. Goes into three phases. 14,000, 15,000 degrees immediately. Just basically evaporates anything within its within its range. And of course, ultimately in the end, you got this column. Look at that. And you wonder how come I'm so concerned about a nuclear holocaust. And they claim that we have the ability right now with what's already done been formed. Plutonium, uranium mixed together of destroying this planet. at least the face of this planet 700 times 
700 planets. We can destroy right now with what's already here. The whole planet. The whole face of the planet. I mean, in one person's eyes, that may look cool or interesting. But in my eyes, I see hell. I see a reign of terror. I see something that should never be unleashed upon the humanity. Because it will basically destroy everything in its path. Everything. And the way that I understand it, there ain't but one creature, if you want to call it a creature, that has the artillery of defending itself throughout all this, and that would be a, car a cockroach. Discovered the original calculations made 50 years ago were off by a full mile. Instead of 35,000 feet, it was something like 40,000 feet, and it was because of the way they measured it. That a cockroach can withstand that after it submerges itself down in the sand, and it can come out of its hull. I don't even see how a cockroach can survive that. That literally will disintegrate the oxygen out of the air. May God have mercy on us if something like that ever occurs.